I mean, hey, hey, you know, you get all those, hey, it's just natural. You're a guy. You want to look. Hey, you know, hey, look at that. It's just a girl. Yeah, hey, you know, hooray for boobies. Whatever stupid thing people are going to say to you. You can't, you just can't, you know. It's one thing, you know, like with the guys at Triple X Church, where well, they have to go inside of porn conventions, but they're going in there with a certain directive. And that's hard, and they take their wives with them because that's rough, you know. But with us sitting at home in our private time, you know, battles are won and lost in secret. And I think that's one of the main thrusts of that verse. And like we talked about, you can cut off your hands, you can cut off your eyes, but it really starts in the heart. So the main thing you have to pray for, the main thing you got you to gotta look out for, man, is you got to say, God, give me a heart for you you know that's a prayer that, that we should all pray you know give me a heart that that's for you know for you give me a heart that will be for my my significant other my wife my husbands you know for women you know whatever the case may be you want that you want to have a heart that is that is singular in its purpose but it all starts with being a heart toward God once that happens the overflow as he said, you know, Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, my and all your strength, and then to love your neighbor as yourself. Well, you can't accomplish that second commandment without the first. So that's really where we have to be. We have to say, you know, and as we talk to people who aren't Christian. If you love God, God more than anything else, everything else that you love, you're going to love it all. A whole lot better. Exactly. That is well said. That is absolutely well said because, yeah, you, if you try to do it, if you try to flip it. Love my love my wife uh, the most first. Put uh, her before God. Then your wife is going to. Oh, experience. I, I can generally say that doesn't work out well because I think I put Marie on too high of a pedestal and I loved her too much and then obviously. Right, and, and trying to love her, you. And what what happens is that people often say, "Well, what's so what's wrong with loving your wife that much?" Well, it's not loving your wife that much. It's just it's backwards, because you put Marie on a pedestal. Marie, I don't know if you want to say her name on camera, but it's we, whatever. It's, it's over. It's too late now, now. You you love her, right? And you sacrifice, and you had to, and when you love somebody, you do things to make them happy, correct? So you try to do everything you could to make her happy. Was Marie a lover of God, a lover of Christ? No. Neither was so, I. So, 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 what do you end up doing? What I'm not supposed to be doing? Right, because you're loving her so much, trying to please her so much, that God actually is like a non, it's like not even He was there when we blessed our food, and that was pretty much it. And that was pretty much it, just for your food. Yeah, and then she she becomes like your replacement, you know, like your 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 version of God, if you will not. She couldn't possibly live up to God God's right. God's standards. And there again, there comes the yep, and there comes the letdown, because you want her to fulfill your happiness, you want her to be your everything, and when she falters on any one of those things, from not making you happy sexually to burning a meal, you become angry, and now you go looking elsewhere, because. Man, you burn this stuff in the microwave. I'm cheating. And you would be, you think that sounds crazy. But I know and I've talked to guys who have had extramarital affairs, family members, friends, and the, when it gets down to it, the stuff that they end up like, what ends up driving them to that point, much like Eve in the Garden of Eden, it wasn't much. It didn't take a whole lot of convincing. It was like, I came home, man, the macaroni was all messed up, and I was like, that's it! I mean, it's like, it's like crazy stuff. It's just, Dishes in the sink, yeah, no clothes it, washed. Yeah, it's just finding a Kids reason. Kids out running wild. Yeah, looking for a reason to do it. You're just looking for any, give me any little reason for me to just peel off, and I'm peeling. I don't need nothing else. Because they can't satisfy you like that. And so you start looking for reasons to get out. God is not like that because God is all satisfying. He fills you up. He's that blazing center, as John Piper will put it. You can't get enough of God. You don't have a gas tank big enough to go, you know what? I'm full. Thank you, Jesus. I need no more of you. Your gas tank ain't big enough. 
Sandra McCracken in one of her songs put it best. Thought I was full, but I was halfway to the top. Love is an ocean, and I am a tiny cup. And I thought that was like, I was like, man, that is like so cool because it's like, you know, she explains the love of God. She compares it to like being like a little Dixie cup trying to like scoop the ocean. You ain't, you ain't, it ain't gonna happen. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, here, do this, drain this, drain this ocean. Not gonna happen. And it's so much that you don't even got room to hold it all. So that, that's the difference between God. So why does Jesus come? To give us, that's what he means by he came to save sinners and to give us life that we should have it more abundantly. And that's the abundant life is to fill us full of that joy, to fill us full of God, to fill us full of the things so that we don't have to clamor for all this other stuff and try to fill us up. That's only going to end up being a disappointment and, and, and all that good stuff. So, anybody else got no? What? <laughs> good session. Good session. Yes, it was. Well, would you like to eat? And in prayer, sir? Yeah, we're going to end in prayer now. Shout out to afterwards, so shout outs now. Well, uh, to all the, those who couldn't be here uh, this week, you know, hope to see you soon. I've got surgery coming up, so we want to keep him. Oh, fear and keep Miss... Uh, fear the beard. Fear the beard. Fear the beard. Uh, <laughs> Miss Price, keep her in her prayers. She's she, in the hospital. She's in the hospital. Okay. And her daughter just tore her ACL also, too, so keep her in. Oh, I saw her. Yeah, I saw her up there the other day. Okay. Keep them... In our prayers. All right, cool. All right, well, we'll say a prayer. Roll out. Dear Lord, we thank you once again for being able to come here, have this time, and and to learn more about you and to learn why you sent your son. And we thank you for the gift of your son, because then we know that in your son and in the giving of your son, you are giving us yourself. And we thank you, and we just can't have enough. And we pray that you would make us uh, better witnesses for you through studying the word and that we would continue to tell others about you and to be able to express the dire need that they're in if they do not know your son and to show them the truth through the scriptures of why we all need a savior. And it's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Whoop, whoop. Amen. <laughs>